There are a couple ways you can print off a range of cells, like if you don't want to print off the entire worksheet, just go ahead and select that range, and then go backstage, file, down to print, and right now it wants to print the active sheets, so you see a sheet that we have active, I mean if we had more than one worksheet within the workbook, select the one that you want to print, and with it being active, it'll print that one, because what you see over here is what's going to come out of your printer, so make sure you got the right worksheet selected but we don't want to do that. Instead, we want to click on the drop-down arrow. We don't want to print the entire workbook. We want to print what we have selected. Select it, it updates it, and that's what we have selected, so we're good to go. Go ahead and click Print. Let's go ahead and hit the back arrow. What about multiple selections? How does it handle that? Let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's click and drag to select that. Hold down the Control key and click and drag, and click here and drag there. So I have a total of four different selections. Let's go backstage, click on File, down to Print, and, well, there's the first selection. Let's scroll down to the bottom. Remember, we had a total of four, so each selection gets its own separate page. Let's go ahead and go back. Now, when I click off of this, it deselects everything, but if I want to keep that so I don't have to remember how to reselect it, in other words, I want to use the Set Print Area feature, leave it selected, come up here, click on the Page Layout tab, go to the Page Setup group, click on the Print Area drop-down arrow, and there you go. Set the Print Area. When you click on it, it borders those selections. So when I click off, you can, well, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a border that goes around that selection, this one, that one, and, well, that cell in this area here. So when I'm ready to print, let's go ahead and click on File, go down to Print. Okay, that's not one of my selections, or the ones that I set as a print area. So, just what I said, it wants to print a selection. We don't want to print a selection. We want to click on the drop down arrow, go to the active sheet, and go off the set print area. It doesn't print the entire sheet, just those areas that we set to print on that active sheet. So, let's go ahead and scroll down. How many do we have? Four. One for each set print area. And it gets its own separate page. Cool. Let's go ahead and go back. And then to clear that, just come up here, click on print area, and say you want to clear it, or if you have additional areas that you want to add to the areas that you already set to print. In other words, it's nice to be able to select those areas within the viewable screen, but if I have to scroll down and select another area, well, then that makes it nice because then I can come up here and say, okay, I want to add that. So instead of four print areas, when I click add to, click off, there's that one, and there's the other four, I get five. So file, to print, and I should have five pages when I scroll down to the bottom, and I do. Cool. Let's go ahead and hit back. And then to clear it all off, go ahead and just click on print area, and go down to clear print area. And they all disappear. Now next, I want to go over what I covered in an earlier training video about print scaling. In other words, when I want to be able to take my worksheet and fit it all, like let's say into one page, I can scale it down so the size of the font will be smaller, but hopefully not too small that I can't see it on the page because then that defeats the purpose of the scaling feature, but small enough that I can still see it when I print it off. And the nice thing about the scale to fit feature is that when it comes to me working in the design view on my worksheet, it doesn't shrink it here because the alternative, if I didn't have that feature, would be to come up here on the home tab and select the entire worksheet and then you know, set the font size a lot smaller and that can be annoying if I want to be able to see it while I'm working on it in a larger size of font and not have to switch back and forth saying okay I'm working on it here's a large size now let me change it down to a smaller size so I can print it off so it can all fit onto one worksheet and then come back here select it again and change the size no what you can do instead is come up here and click on the page layout tab go to the scale to fit group and that will scale it down but only when it comes to printing it won't scale it down here when you're working within the worksheet here. So for example, you can see when I went to the print preview, as we discussed in an earlier training video, that after you come back at a print preview, it'll show you the dash line, the page breaks. So right now we got a vertical page break. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there to the left-hand side of my white cross, and it's splitting or breaking between columns G and H. So if I'm like, oh, I really gotta have column H and I, scale it down so when we print it off, the size of the font will be smaller, but only when it comes to printing, not here. 
So watch what happens that page break when I come up here and I go from 100% of normal size of the font size down to, let me click down once, and did you see that? It went from going between column G and H to H and I. So at 95%, it says that it could fit column H in there. All right, I want column I. So let's go ahead and down again. 90% is not doing it. So it's 90% of its full size. So when I click down again, okay, 85%, it says, well, the page break shows to the right of I that it will be able to fit columns A through I. Well, let's take it for a test drive just to be sure that it all fits onto one page. So file, down to print, because what you see over here is what's going to come out of your printer. Yeah, it looks like it, but you want to scroll down to the bottom and check this out. There's page one, page two, page two, it doesn't fill up the entire page. Let me scroll down to page three, and page three is blank. Well, we talked about that in an earlier training video. Let me go ahead and hit the back arrow that when it's so close that it's cutting off a little bit part of the white spot there, you won't see the white spot. That's why it looks like as a blank page because you don't see white on white, right? So what we want to do is probably scale it down just a ticky bit more. And you don't have to go down every 5% here. You can come in here and like do, let's do 81, hit enter, because we want to make the size of the font when we print it off as large as we can, as legible as we can, because if it's too small, then people won't be able to read it. So let's go ahead and take a look at it now at 81%, and you can see the page break is now over to column J, so it's not going to cut off anything close to it. We have extra gappage here. Let's go ahead and click on File, go down to Print, so we shouldn't have an extra page. We just should have two. Fabulous. Oh, that's great. Now you can make adjustments here, as we went over in an earlier training video without going back. Onto the Page Layout tab to the Scaling Group, we can go ahead and click and drag the scroll bar down, and then drag that down. And well, there's Custom Scaling that we talked about. You can click on it, and you can say that you want to fit everything onto one page, if that's your goal, or fit all columns onto one page, and fit all rows, and then you'll have to see, because there's a give and take, and again, it comes all to scaling, about how it's going to shrink everything to fit onto one page, or to bring the columns onto one page, or all the rows onto one page. You got your custom scaling options, which brings up the page setup window, which you can also come down and click on the link, page setup. And there you can adjust to, well, 81%. You may want to go up to 82 because, in my opinion, I like to make the font, when it comes to printing it off, as large as I can, but yet have everything fit, or at least those columns, so they're not breaking onto page 3 and 4. So I got the columns all onto one page. And it's just the rows, the records that are breaking across other pages because it can't fit all into one page. So you can do that. And in fact, if you want to fit everything onto one page, instead of second guessing here, like should it be at 50%, 60%, and you know, keep doing that and looking over here to see if it's on one page, you can go ahead and select the option just below it, fit one page by one page tall. Okay, let's go ahead and click okie dokie, and did it fit? And there we go, one page, fit everything, but at what cost? Let's go ahead and, is it zoomed in? Okay, click to zoom in, that's not too bad. That's what it's going to look like when I print this out. So it's still legible. In any case, let's go ahead and hit the back arrow to see what percentage of scaling it went to. And there it is, on the page layout tab, scale to fit, it's at 70%. So you see what I'm saying? You can come in here and do the scaling, and when you scale down, you'll see that if the page break is in between G and H, it'll start going out to fit in all the columns in there, but you won't be able to see the horizontal unless you scroll down the horizontal page break to be able to shrink that to see it start to disappear. So for me, it's a lot easier if I just go ahead and make that option in the page setup which is right here. You can access it on the Page Layout tab in the Page Setup group. Click on the Expandable Dialog Box button, and it's right there. Now, you can do it here, or let me close out. It's right here in the Scale to Fit group. You can have the width as one page and the height as one page, or maybe you're okay with two pages because you want to make the font larger. You don't want to scale it down to 70%. So let's go ahead, and it's like unloosing your belt trying to expand here. It'll also expand the size of the font when it has more room. So click two pages and it goes from 70 to 81 percent. So the font has now increased. Now again, you're not going to see it here. That's what makes it nice about the scaling feature. 
is because I get the font size the way I'd like to see it when I'm working on my worksheet, but when it comes out of the printer, it'll be different. It'll be 81% of its normal size. Now, if you're like, uh, I want to be able to do the scaling feature, you won't have access to it. It's faded out unless you change it to go to automatic for the width and automatic for the height. And then it's available because it wants to keep it in proportion when you use this feature right here to scale it down. Or you can actually scale it up. You want larger size font, but not so large when it comes to you in the working view that it's annoying just when you print it off. And notice when I increase it, okay, there's the horizontal page break, that gray dash line. So when I increase it, is it going to go up and put less on page one or let more come onto page one? Well, when it increases the font size, it's taking up more space, so it's going to go up. So if I go from 110 to 115, you can see that's moving up, and also the vertical page break is coming in. So horizontal up and vertical left. So we're getting less and less information on the first printed page, and there's your quadrants. There's the first page, the second, well, there's the second page. I have to scroll down. Okay, there's page two, and then over here is page three and then page four. So to exaggerate to make a point, let's go ahead and you can see the size is still the same here, but when I go back to print it, okay, let's go up a bit more. Let's make this huge, 140%. Okay, click on file, go down to print. Okay, that's a lot bigger. That's not normal. That scaled up quite a bit. And if you wanna be able to see it, you can scroll down here, click on custom scaling, and click on page setup. That way you don't have to leave the backstage here. You can see it's adjusted to 140% of normal size. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please look in the description below this video.